The ongoing bank drama has been ramping up volatility across the major indices. The Dow and S&P and the Nasdaq all in the green this afternoon after opening the session lower. Joining us for more on the market is Alpama CEO Octavio Morenzi and RBC Capital Markets Head of U.S. Equity Strategy, Lori Calvacina. Uh, Octavio, let's start out with you. Uh, what is your reaction uh, regarding what we're hearing of this uh, possible uh, rescue plan from these bigger banks uh, for First Republic and what this, the market reaction uh, that we're seeing with these regional banks right now? Well, the market reaction seems to be very positive. So uh, I, I guess they're sort of buying the story and saying this looks really encouraging. It looks like Federal uh, First Republic is not going to go under. The large banks are stepping in and they're going to put in the deposits to make sure that happens. However, we haven't really seen the details of this plan. A big question I would have is how much are these large banks going to charge First Republic for these deposits? Are they just going to put it into a checking account and get 0% interest on in it? That means it's going to take a big loss because they could be getting 4 or 5% on that by just putting into US short-term US Treasuries. So those deposits might come at quite a high cost for First Republic, though they haven't said exactly how that's going to work. I suspect the large banks are in it to make money. They're not going to give something away to First Republic. So they're going to ask for a very, very substantial amount of money and interest to be paid on that money. And that will wreck a First Republic's uh, income statement. Lori, how are you looking at this just in terms of the risk that this potentially poses to the broader market? Yes, the market's reacting in an optimistic way right now to the latest developments of this. But still, you saw that lingering risk out there about some of the instability within the banking se sector. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. I actually have sort of a different take than most people on the price action this week. And if you look at today and whenever big events happen, I always watch the sectors. I think that's the best way to interpret how the market's feeling. And what we're seeing today is, is actually somewhat similar to what we've seen all week. So, yes, the financials are doing well, but it's actually, you know, I'm looking at my screen, communication services, tech, consumer discretionary. The big you know, kind of growth engines of the S&P 500 are what are really still leading the pack. And as we look back over the past week, we've really seen more evidence of rotation from things like the financials into these growthy areas, areas that tend to do frankly well when interest rate expectations and Fed fears are coming down. So today we are seeing a good reaction in the market, but we're also seeing a continuation of some of these growth areas doing very, very well. And it's really that that's been bolstering the market and keeping it resilient all week. So are you seeing, uh, when you're talking about the sectors, I mean, I'm pulling up right now a four-day chart and we're seeing on our Wi-Fi Interactive that financials down 3% over the last four days. We have seen a lot of volatility when it comes to this sector, of course. So do you think that there is more trouble ahead dis despite these measures, these lifelines? You know, I think it's not for me to say. I think that we're in a wait and see mode. I think that we need to really look to the experts on the banks to, to really get a sense of that. And they need time to digest some of this information. But I do think that what we have seen when you look at some of the initial corporate reactions, and we did a piece on this the other day, um, was that, you know, there was a lot of sort of discussion about how the initial damage and the initial fallout from the situation was fairly, you know, sort of limited, you know, in terms of companies saying, did we have cash? Did we have a business relationship? Yes or no. Um, so I think it's really going to be a question of derivative impacts down the road that really kind of matters for my world and market pricing. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we have seen very, you know, kind of healthy resilience underneath the surface. So I think you've seen very extreme moves in the bond market this week, but the S&P 500 has actually been behaving very, very well. And I think that's something to be taken note of here. Yep, just about one and a half percent today. Octavio, a lot of questions here about what the bank failures over the last week, what that could potentially mean for the Fed at its meeting next week. What do you think the Fed is likely to do if we were to see a 25 basis point hike? What message would that send and how do you think the markets would react? Well, I think the Fed is really stuck in a very difficult situation right now, because on the one hand, they're trying to fight inflation. And the only tool at their disposal really to do that is to jack up interest rates and try and reduce the money supply and drive down inflation that way. On the other hand, they've got the banks screaming at them, you need to lower interest rates again to basically shore up our balance sheets. Now, ordinarily, if you saw this kind of banking crisis uh, unfold, 
the Fed and other central banks will just slash interest rates and shore up the banking sector and everything will be fine. This time around it's different. They can't do that. Their hands are tied because they're busily fighting inflation. And that seems like it's taking precedence. We saw the European Central Bank come out today and increase interest rates by 50 basis points. And that, I think, gives the Fed a bit of impetus. I'm not saying the Fed is going to take a cue from the ECB. It usually works the other way around. But in this case, it might give Jay Powell sort of the confidence to also increase interest rates. And the markets took it very well indeed. Surprising. And usually markets react very badly to those kinds of big interest rates increases. But this time around, they didn't. So I think Jay Powell and the FOMC is going to take umbrage from that and basically say, OK, that's going to be OK we can jack up interest rates a bit at at least 25 basis points and we should be okay. The ECB showed us the way. It didn't really hurt markets. In fact, it did quite the opposite. It helped them. It buoyed them up. Yeah, that's a great point and very interesting here, especially then also when you take into account what's happening over there with the European banks, comparing that here, though, within the U.S., and then some would argue that the banking issue here within the U.S., though, is worse. Lori, if we do, in fact, see a 25 basis point hike next week, is that a mistake here? So look, I think there's a question of what the Fed will do versus what they should do. If you talk to our economist, Tom Porcelli, he would have told you that the Fed should have stopped hiking rates a long time ago, yet they have been on this path. Um, so I think history will be the judge of that. I do agree with Tom. I think they should have stopped already. Um, I think it takes time for the effects to, you know, of, of tightening we've already seen to filter into inflation, to filter into the economy. And I do think inflation is headed lower. Um, but putting all that aside, I think expectations for what the Fed will do have been all over the place the last week or so. We've really seen a lot of gyrations. There's still some time before we head into that meeting for market expectations to shift again. But the market has gotten more comfortable again with the idea of a 25 basis point hike. So if we were to get it, I don't think it would necessarily cause a lot of damage in the short term. Um, I do think the messaging, though, the press conference always ends up mattering more than the decision in here. And so the language that Powell uses, um, you know, hopefully he will not say anything to spook investors, but we'll have to see what ends up happening. That has certainly been the driver of the market after the last couple of meetings. Lori, Octavio, great to have you both. Thanks so much.